this, we need to go back to um, several years ago, where um, just like our university, a university had a lot of different computers. Yeah, and because we teach quite important subjects, we have quite a lot of reasonably powerful computers, and they're not actually used that much. A lot of the time, we've got all these processors and all this RAM and all these resources just sitting there doing essentially nothing. Sometimes we'll have classes on and the students will be using it at the time, but in the evenings, um, early mornings, uh, in between classes, all of these computers are sitting there doing not a lot. So um, the basic idea was, well, if we have all these computers sitting there not doing much, it would be a really good thing if we were able to utilize their resources, utilize their processing power when they weren't busy to do something else. And that's the basic idea between, uh, behind uh, grid computing. You take a bunch of computers, um, don't have to be in the same location, don't have to be the same sort of computers, they can be any computers you want, and you link them together using um, grid software. <clears throat> then you can submit jobs to the grid. So that means you can tell the grid software, I want to perform this job. And by job we mean uh, processing some data or um, something like that, some computing job. Then the, um, the grid software will match that job up to the available computers in the grid. And when those computers aren't busy, they will start processing this job. So essentially, you're taking all this spare processing power that you're not using, uh, that you already paid for, and actually getting some use out of it. What makes a grid a grid is the software. It's nothing more, nothing less. Right? Without grid software, it's just a network of computers or cloud computing. Yeah, if you if you want to uh, link the, the computers up in that way, what makes a grid is this idea of uh, sort of a constantly changing group of computers that can have jobs assigned to them if one drops out the job can then be reassigned almost instantly to another computer with the progress that the first computer made already saved so that way it keeps changing um, and essentially evolving over time new um, computers can be added it doesn't matter what the type of computers are they all work when we teach grid computing, we uh, teach people about the, the structure of what makes an actual grid and what, how the software actually works, so there's uh, lots of different components. We use one called Condor, uh, which is freely available. You can go right now, go to, on the internet, um, download it, and you can install it on your home computer and turn your home computer into a grid with one uh, computer on it. And you can play around, you can submit jobs to it, and then when your computer is not busy, it will actually run those jobs in the background. Um, which can be quite useful, particularly if you're working in the area of computing. You will sometimes have sort of long, dull simulations to run, and then you can just uh, essentially uh, get your computer to run them when you're not there. Um, so it's quite interesting, uh, it's quite useful, it's essentially turning lots of little computers into a more powerful computer um, which most people don't need a very powerful computer but um, there's lots of different areas for, I mean even stuff if you're doing um, like this video editing and so mm -hmm. on that's all done digitally now or most of it is anyway that takes lots of rendering time mm -hmm. you could render your um, your effects and so on on a grid so you'd have a much faster more powerful computer available to you which would speed up the process without you having to actually buy a more powerful computer which is one of the nice things about it. So how do you promote the grid system software within the university and also out on location? There's all these commercials with Microsoft and so on people know what the cloud is so you'd also want to be talking uh, letting people know the differences between the cloud and what a grid does and the advantages that a grid could give over a cloud and the different uses for them. Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of the areas you'd be looking at. Oh, fantastic. I really appreciate it for your time and thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much.